Okay, we uh, made a decision here. We're going right to the end with this project, you know, and we've got the uh, plates made up and we're bolted into the uh, jig uh, attached to the swing arm and aligned up to the motor. Uh, so now we're going to uh, machine up some parts to uh, accommodate the input shaft and the main shaft and shifter block and all that, and this video is all about that. So the first part you see in here is the uh, very start of uh, machining up the input shaft housing. Well here's a little update here. We're trying to fit this output shaft sprocket and uh, shifter quadrant into this hole that we're boring out here. Then we're going to decide where we're going to locate that actual sprocket. So next year we're machining up the uh, main shaft uh, housing and uh, there's quite a few steps to that so we just got some short clips here of each step there and that by no means all of it, it took a lot longer than what we can show you here if we get off the barn. Here we're uh, machining off a little extra weight on a bearing carrier and a shifter fork assembly for this project we're working on. just got a machine from flange to flange here. You'll see what the finished product's like. You need the rotary table to be able to machine this the way I want it. Because Here we took a block of aluminum and we cut it down to the size of the kind of pre-drawn out a little bit as what we needed for a shifter block. So this is the beginning of building our uh, actual uh, shifter block to accommodate the shifter parts that we're going to use on this project. In this section here you can see there's kind of some scribe marks on the, on a piece of aluminum that we got in the, in the vise. So we're just machining here to uh, get things rough cut to size. On to the bearing carrier. We had to machine that all out like that. Big slot there. Now I've got it marked on here. I don't know if we can pick it up. Marked on there. I've got to machine some of that out. And I've got to put four mounting holes in there before I take it out of the vise. But it all is, uh, it's all coming together slowly but surely. Here we got our shifter fork that we're going to be using there and we're kind of uh, making a decision as where we actually need the, uh, the hole drill for, for installing this shifter fork. So this is the start of the uh, boring and drilling and boring of the hole for the uh, shifter fork shaft to be installed. And this hole goes right through. So here we uh, we're just checking the uh, hole out for the shifter fork here, and as you can see here, we have to uh, do some more milling in the uh, in the in the uh, where the shifter fork actually has to be installed. It's not complete yet, so we have to reset that up and. Uh, get the mill in there and finish off this hole so the shifter works. Okay, shifter's all in there, all the machining is done. Got to do a little more modification inside. We got to get that to come all the way up and it's not got enough clearance side to side. There's no movement side to side on that bottom end. So, but other than that, it's going to be fine. Uh, the only other thing is uh, Got to make sure we got clearance on the gear once it's installed. So we'll come back and do some more there. Then we're going to modify this shifter drum here to fit in there, and that's going to be our as this rotates, it's going to drive it in gear and out, in and out. We'll drive it in gear and out. Okay, so here we're uh, got one piece welded in already there, and we're checking things before we make our final welds on the other on the input shaft housing. Uh, everything looks good, so we're going to weld this up here and then continue on with it. After this, we're we're ready to put it in the uh, in the jig, uh, bolt it back into the uh, into the swing arm, and bolt the motor up and start building the frame. If you're wondering uh, why we're putting a clutch in this here, is because a uh, I've seen quite a few uh, hill climbers built with snowmobile engines and they're good builds and everything but they're using the variable clutch for the snowmobile and I don't think the reaction time is uh, conducive for good for hill climbing. I think we can, use, we can do better 
if we build this with a clutch where we're in control of when we can put the power to the ground or, or a lot of power, it's 160 horsepower on that engine by, by the book. So you know, when, we're, when we're looking at doing uh, this project, we should have more than enough power.